Hi everybody, good day to you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whichever of those applies to you at this current point in time. This is a 2007, I believe it is. Yep, 2007, maybe 2008 Honda CRV. I promise I will get to the relevance of the thumbnail in a uh -oh. moment. Oh, there we go. Norm Mueller. Now this uh, might be a little bit different of a video. Uh, there's kind of some drama here already. Starting the engine. First things first in this CRV with 191,955 miles is that this car just left another shop. Uh, it could be the dealership, uh, it could be an independent, I don't know, they didn't tell us who. It seems the other shop gave this lady an estimate for uh, for a bunch of items on the car. And she was reluctant to, uh, to have these items repaired just because of cost, so she brought it over here for a second opinion. And, and that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna go recheck through her list of stuff and confirm that it does need these things or it doesn't need these things. And then, um, you know, we're, we're gonna go from there. She just kind of wants to make sure that because she's a little bit older, that the other folks weren't uh, weren't just trying to sell her on some stuff. So we're just gonna go verify that everything's on the up and up and, uh, and we'll see what happens. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a good video. Backing out the auto. Now I believe primarily what was on the list here was uh, front ball joints. Uh, I think they had it written up for a wheel alignment and uh, maybe some sway bar links or something. I'm not sure, but it all appears to be front end suspension related. Uh, I did not get any details with regards to a concern or anything like that. Uh, no described symptoms. So we're just going to go ahead and do a visual inspection on the suspension on this car. Again, to make sure everything's on the up and up. Like I said, our customer is a little bit older and she's on a fixed income, powering down, and just wants to make sure her money's going as far as it should. Which in 2022's economy, I don't blame anybody for taking such a position because that's really smart right now. Stack your cash. And I understand that stacking your cash is ultimately the opposite of what you should be doing during an economic slowdown, but Considering that the price of goods and services is a little bit outrageous right now, I see no problem with that. But I'm not an economist, I'm a biologist. One more right there. There we go. Moving on up. Look, another green subscribe button. So we're looking for lower ball joints. What is going on here? Well, there's a driver's side lower. It's got newish looking bolts. See the, the non-shiny on the passenger side? And yet we have shiny on the driver's side. Same thing with the castle nut at the top. This unit here has been replaced at some point. Why do we need a new one? And why is there oil on it? There shouldn't be oil on it because the boot is not leaking. The axle's not leaking. So why is there oil on this ball joint? So they could say it was leaking? Mm-hmm. That one's got a torn boot. I'm gonna go find out if they recommended both of these ball joints or just the one. I could see just doing the one because that boot right there is torn. You can see it right, like right here. Right there, see that tear? Yeah, but all the grease is still there. And if I shake the wheel, I'm not getting any motion out of that ball joint. So it's not affecting the handling or safety of the vehicle. Uh, you know, that's kind of a non-issue. I mean, it is, but it, it isn't. It's about as much of an issue as this oil filter leak right here. It's a non-issue. And same thing on this side for that matter. That's kind of a non-issue. This this uh this grease boot on this side is not even torn. Mm, I detect moderate treachery, or at least a high-level idiocracy going on here. Something's not adding up. Not adding up at all. Uh, they also had on their estimate that this vehicle is in need of sway bar links. 
which is going to be this unit right here. This rod that runs up to the strut and connects to the sway bar that runs across. The purpose of this is it's basically a linear spring and when the vehicle goes through a turn and the suspension twists and articulates, this spring, so to speak, will try to level the vehicle because if one side squats, the other side is lifting up so it's going to twist this bar and naturally this bar wants to untwist. There's nothing wrong with these links. Again, I smell treachery afoot here. You're the kind of person that wrecks all this for the rest of us. Stop doing this. Stop selling stuff that does not need to be sold to people. Especially old ladies. They don't have money like that. All right, I'm gonna go and uh, kind of document what I found here and uh, see if I cannot fish up some more details on what's going on. I'd like to see. Cut. All right, stand by. Let's go figure this out. Do -do 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 there it is. Okay, uh, the other shop also went for the low-hanging fruit and they tried to sell them a cabin air filter, so we're gonna go in there and check that real quick. Locked. Oh, let's see. Hmm, still locked. Is this the valet key? This must be the valet key. Um, well, I can't check their cabin filter right now because I can't get in there. I have to uh, pull the glove box door down. There's a little slot inside in the back that houses the cabin. Uh, I'll see if I can't get the other key and then we can verify that filter. Uh, let's go under the hood and see if there's anything under there that the other shop might have missed. Or not even missed, maybe something that uh, they found and figured they would just save that for later. You know, a smaller ticket item, like a valve cover gasket or something. Do you see the tactic at play? You sell expensive stuff first, get somebody locked in to fix in their car because now they're invested and then you sell them smaller stuff later. Bad practice. Yeah, folks, for the non-car people, first time at a shop or a new shop, if you get a huge estimate and you don't know them, that's a no good, in my opinion, unless you ask for it. I mean, I give people huge estimates all the time, but they ask for it. You know, if I show up to, to a joint and just have the oil changed and they come out with a thousand bucks worth of work that's a no-no that means they're just trying to drive revenue and they're not really trying to fix your car well I don't see anything going on here I want to check these fans real quick though these are very failure prone I'd like to know if the, these fans are all in good shape let's fire it up turn the AC on real quick Mike they never made mention of those fans but it's a high failure component I just want to verify that real quick like Powering on AC Max. Turning the AC on should fire up both fans. B check. D. Okay. Fans are fanning. This is good. Check a couple fluids. Power steering. That's okay. I accept this. Coolant's on the low side, and 90K could go for some service. I'm not gonna open the radiator, it's a little warm. Let's see, brake fluid, kinda greenish. Indicates copper contamination, perhaps some moisture. I would recommend replacing that. Uh, let's see what our trans fluid looks like since we have a dipstick. Nice and shiny and red. I could recommend that based on mileage, not condition. There we go. What else did I forget? I already looked at the brakes. Tires are in great shape. Wipey blades, how we doing? Folded over and crusty. You can use wipers. All right. Lights are a little faded. All right. Cool. Overall, this thing is in super nice condition. It's just very well taken care of. It's clean. That's how a car should be. In fact, this is the condition that this thing was in when it was new. Like, this is a like new vehicle. I kind of want to buy this. If we take a look at the mileage on this sticker, this oil change was very recently done. 94,115. And the sticker say, or the odometer says 91,955. So if they did 3,000 miles, this oil change is 800 miles old. You know, let's see if the oil level is full. I'm just a little curious. We can check their work and see if they actually did a good job. 
All right, dipstick. Let's see what you got for us. We'll wipe it down. Oil looks fairly clean, so they did change it. That's a negative Ghost Rider. Look at that. We're at the bottom. We're a half a quart low. Come on, guys. Keep going. Yeah, bring her all the way up. All the way up. All the way up. Oh, look, the other shop left the valve off. No, this stuff. that it needs. What's wrong with those? Good. Yeah, I mean, you know, they can get their verbiage wrong because the bushings are good and the control arms. There's there's nothing wrong here. This, this lady, she, they tried to sell her. Um, and I can't check the cabin filter because she locked the glove box door. And uh, the key that we have is the valet key. What's funny is she probably did the same thing over there, so how did they get it down here? Bet. Find out. Find out. Uh, if she locked her glove box door and gave them the same key, because that's the valet key and I can't get in. So if they didn't even bother opening it to check it, then how do they know how to sell her? Okay. Yep. Anyway, that being said, um, I put everything on the document and uh, it could use some fluids based on mileage and a little bit of condition, but the reality is this is a freaking mint car, dude. It doesn't need anything. Yeah, if they want to do fluid maintenances, that's all fine and dandy. And, oh, and he, and he does need wipers. We do need to put wipers on it. That's safe. Okay, I'm sorry, man. I didn't tell you this. Security, right? No, seriously, I think she's going to be pretty happy to find out that, uh, well, she's going to be pretty mad, too. Because they tried to sell her, like, a, what, a grand worth of stuff? More? I really hate to abruptly stop and cut to random footage of a fuel additive. I ended up parking this car outside, and the lady came by later on to pick it up. It turns out the customer was actually very glad that they did not have to perform any repairs on this car. I don't ever like to bash other people, so I want to give this person the benefit of the doubt. I like to think that they really didn't know what they were doing and they were just kind of following instructions. Or perhaps the situation is that there is a noise that these folks were looking for and I was never communicated that type of information. That being said, they may not have been able to find it, and it's possible they were suggesting parts that could be most probable to fix said noise. Things are not always what they seem, and I'm aware I don't have complete information, so I have to give benefit of the doubt. Moving back to the dark side of the spectrum, if somebody did this just to make some money or to try to make a sale, then that's just pretty low, and you're giving us all a bad name, and you should stop. Moving on, since I did kind of ruin this video by not shooting an ending, I have only one thing to offer you, and that is another video. Shameless effort of self-promotion, I have uploaded this other video onto my second channel. And I've done this for two reasons. One of which is to introduce new viewers to my second channel. And the second reason is that this particular video belongs on the second channel, simply due to the nature of its content. Additionally, this is where all of this random footage will become relevant. Therefore, in an effort to appease you for the outrage I've caused for ruining the first video, I invite you to check out the links down in this video's description in the pinned comment up above or at the end screen to take you over to the second channel to enjoy some of my bonus content and watch the Oxytane fuel additive update. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you over there.